Hey guys, Coffee Black here in the 3D Jake Workshop. If you have ever checked out the shop, you may have noticed how much material choice we have. And we have lots, like so many different kinds. And it's something we really pride ourselves on. Whatever your application, we have something suitable. But recently I've been thinking of some non-standard applications. And one that comes to mind is a bouncy ball. Okay, so it's probably not the most useful application other than bouncing, but it's fun. So we're gonna do it. Biggest bounce wins. We actually found a YouTube video that goes into great detail about making a bouncy ball. So we took some notes and gave it a shot. That's, and? That's disappointing. How disappointing? Um, pretty disappointing. I mean, look at that. Like... It turns out this worked a bit better on a soft surface like carpet, but not so much on a hard surface. So what is going on here? Most of us take infill and perimeters for granted. 10% infill and 3 to 5 perimeters unless we need something strong. And then we shoot for 100% infill. For a bouncy ball to work, well, it needs to behave the same way regardless of which point on the ball it strikes the floor. So, the perimeters need to be just as thick as the top and bottom layers. But likewise, the infill needs to be as symmetrical as possible. It doesn't matter which way it is oriented. It has to transfer energy in the same way. Now, this is what the video I watched got right. Rectilinear infill patterns just won't work well in every direction. Gyroid is better for distributing the force of an impact evenly. Still, the bounce just wasn't that spectacular. Or perhaps TPU is not the best material to use. Normally, when you think of a bouncy ball, you think of a hard rubber ball that is significantly denser and more rigid than TPU. I fear that the flexibility of TPU is actually absorbing the energy and it's not bouncing as much because of this. So, 100% infill? Well, no, unfortunately not. It might seem intuitive given that the force can never be channeled upwards, but all of that material tends to absorb the energy and doesn't make it bounce at all. So now that we know that 100% infill won't work, what about 0% infill? So now your childhood question has been answered. When you had a football, it's hollow inside or it's filled with air, but it has a relatively rigid surface. What happens is when you bounce it, the energy goes through the outside of the ball and then is distributed vertically, causing it to bounce. By the way, we're actually using PLA here. This is one of the most rigid materials, although it is a bit brittle. Throw it like really, really hard. Really hard? Yeah, hard as you can. All right. I broke it. Yeah, you broke it. <laughs> this came out really well, but I would be interested to see if there are other materials or other designs that can improve on our results. Don't think this is just about bouncy balls. Distribution of force can help with so many different kinds of applications. If you have a shelf bracket, for instance, there's lots of compressive forces on various sides. A gyroid infill can really help distribute all of these forces. If you're interested in the challenge, then show us your version of the bounciest ball. Let us know in the comments below, and we'll see you next time.